Hi, this is Steven Roselle. I'm a Senior Solutions Specialist at Autodesk, focusing primarily on Maya, as well as Motion Builder and Mudbox. I have a blog on the area called Maya Maya, so if you're interested in the kinds of presentations I'm showing today, definitely check out my blog at area.autodesk.com slash blogs slash Stephen R. The main focus of the presentation today is going to be on the Maya Service Advantage Pack, which we're announcing here at SIGGRAPH. And uh, we're going to touch on specifically the Xene Assembly Workflow in Maya 2013 SAP. So let's get started. Basically, I'm going to start out just by talking kind of loosely about what Scene Assembly is and talk about the two new nodes that you can create in uh, Maya called Assembly Definitions and Assembly References. We'll start with Assembly Definitions. And basically, what these are are nodes that encapsulate everything uh, associated with a given asset, including its multiple representations, so that you can basically view it in the detail that you need to uh, based on the context that you're seeing it in. So we're going to create an assembly definition node, and then in that we're going to load a couple of representations. First we'll start with the base, or rather the full representation, which is a Maya scene file. We're going to work with this object called an obelisk. In order to see that, I just need to hit F to frame into it. And here you'll see that I have a, uh, a prop, basically, that is going to go into a larger scene. Um, from here, what we can do is we can create a couple of different representations. Now, I could do this ahead of time, or I could actually do it on the fly while I'm creating the assembly definitions. For the sake of the demo, I'm just going to do this on the fly. The first representation I want to create is a cache version of this that would be an optimized a uh, cache file or piece of geometry, a static mesh that would load directly into the GPU and give me a highly optimized uh, draw of my mesh. So I'm going to basically go into my pipeline cache menu here and I'm going to export a GPU cache. And I'm going to basically export this as all because there are actually multiple pieces within this object. So I'll choose export all and I'm going to save out an obelisk.abc file, which is an Alembic cache file. And then I want to simplify this even further by converting it into a bounding box. So we've added a new tool under the Convert menu that allows you to convert objects to bounding boxes. This basically allows you to create the simplest representation possible. If I apply it by default, what it's going to do is it's going to create a single large bounding box, which sometimes is fine, but oftentimes it doesn't really represent the shape of the object. So what I want to do is just quickly undo that, and I'm going to turn on a simple option called Bounding Box Per Shape, and that will basically give me an individual bounding box for each shape in my object. Now I can actually take all three of these shapes and I can basically export those as a GPU cache as well. And we'll just put an underscore BB so that I'll recognize this one as my bounding box cache. I'll save that out. And now I've got my multiple representations. I'm just going to simply undo that step and go back to what I had before. So this is my base scene file, again, which has already been loaded as one of my representations. Now I'm going to add a link to each of those cache files that I created. So first I'm going to load the obelisk abc file, which is the base cache file, the, the kind of intermediate cache file. And then I'm going to load a, another cache file, which is the bounding box. And you can see that I can now switch between each of these. So I have a bounding box view, I have a fast cache draw view, I have a scene source file view, which has full textures and full editability. And I also have a third view, which is a locator. Right now it's not really recognizable, but what I can do is I can go in and I can add an annotation to this. So I'm just going to go in and add an annotation for obelisk, which will basically give me the most minimal representation of this object. Now, a couple of things we need to do before we take this further is the order of these determines which one loads by default when I reference this into another scene. So I want to choose which one of these I want to be my default load, and I'll basically move that up to the top, and that is going to be my obelisk.abc, which for, recogni for uh, recognition's sake, so I can visually recognize this, I'm going to call this cache. Now I'm also going to go in and I'm going to move my locator to the bottom just for visual sake, and I'm going to rename my others. So locator will be locator, but my scene file we'll call detail, and my bounding box file we'll call bbox. So now what I can do, either from my uh, outliner, if I go in, if I right click on this node and go into reference, or rather scene assembly, I have cache, detail, and bounding box, and I can switch between my different representations here. Or with the object selected in the viewport, I can right click, go to my scene assembly menu, and I can swap to my different representations in the viewport as well. Now I'm just going to simply save this file out as obelisk.dot 
or rather underscore AD, AD standing for assembly definition, so that I can reference this into a larger scene. So we'll save that file out. Now before we go into that uh, larger scene, I'm actually going to open up another example of scene assembly. And in this example, I've got a setup of a building which actually has a nested hierarchy of scene assembly nodes, or, or assembly definition nodes rather. So here you can see I have a building definition node, and then below that I have uh, several references to some sub-definition nodes for each of the individual building pieces. So if I were to go in and either in the outliner or in the viewport, select all of these and right click, I can switch between my different views as I did before. So for instance, I can view the simple locator representation, or I can go in and I can view the simple uh, bounding box representation, or I can go in and I can view, again, the full representation or, or uh, detailed representation. Another way I can handle this is if I go to the higher level assembly definition node, I've actually set this up to be a versioning node so that I can not only switch between my different LODs, but with this node selected, I can simply go in and I can choose to view, for instance, a short version of the same building, or using the same building, I can switch to a tall version of the same building. At any point, I can dive into the lower levels, and then I can switch into my various bounding box and or uh, detailed displays as I need to. So now let's talk about this in the context of a larger environment. So I'm going to open up a master scene file here, which is actually a full set or a full environment. And you'll notice that as I open this scene, all the various elements of that scene are popping in uh, one by one. These are actually references called scene, uh, assembly references to underlying scene assembly nodes. Once that loads in, if I pull back, you can see that I've basically got a fully laid out environment with lots of buildings and lots of structures in here. Now each of these is represented in cache format right now. At any point I could switch between my different representations just by selecting all of them, right clicking and switching into bounding box mode for instance, and that will swap out all the underlying representations. So I'm actually going to switch this back into cache mode for now, and then we'll pull in and we'll talk about how we create one of these references. So I've already shown you how to actually create the assembly definition. Once you create an assembly definition, you can actually save that out and reference it into a larger scene. So I'm just going to right click in my outliner. Under my scene assembly menu, I'm going to create a reference, an assembly reference, and I'm going to point that to my underlying obelisk underscore AD file, which is assembly definition. What that will do is it will load the obelisk file in, allowing me to place it within my scene. So now I get a cached version of that obelisk that allows me to place it into my scene. I can drop that down in the appropriate spot. And then if at any point I decide I need to see the detail of this, once again, I can just right click, choose to show detail. And now I've got the fully editable, fully referenceable uh, uh, version of my object in my scene. Now, as I showed before, each of these buildings is made up of a bunch of smaller parts and pieces. So at any point, I can basically go in and choose one of these buildings. Say, for instance, this building here in the background. I'll just up barrel to the higher reference node and say I can't quite see the top of that building, so I'm just going to switch to the tall version of that building. That will reload. Additionally, I want this one to be shorter, so I'll just right click and I'll go in here and switch that to short, and it'll load the short version of that building. I can also do multiple buildings at once. For instance, I can grab each one of these buildings here, go up to the higher level, and simultaneously set all of them to be the tall or short versions of those buildings. If I don't like this one as it's a little bit too tall, I can just right click and just simply switch back over into my short version, and now I've made a, a change to the look of that building. Now, if I wanted to bring in other assets, I could of course continue to go into the outline or right click and create a new scene assembly reference, but this can all be automated through MEL or Python. So all of this is scriptable. So what I've done is I've uh, updated the Layout Tools UI. Layout Tools is a free tool that we provide uh, as a bonus tool on the area. You can download this and install it on your own. And in the new version, I will include uh, an option for referencing assembly nodes. So if you simply set this into assembly mode, and then you point it to a location where there are assembly files, you can basically get an icon-based interface that would allow you to drag and drop objects into your scene. For instance, if I want to bring in this canister here, I just simply click and drag and drop that into my scene, and then I can basically use my snapping controls to basically begin to position and align that as I need to. So now I'll just quickly go in here 
and create a few copies of this. As I create copies of assembly definitions, it basically just references a new version. It's basically the same file that it's referencing in, but in a very efficient way. Now I'll basically go in and grab a bunch more of these uh, particular uh, assets. Let's basically bring in a couple of boxes here, bring in a box there, and then I'll maybe bring in another box over here and maybe stack that on top of the existing box. Maybe I'll create a copy of that and raise that up and then kind of rotate that around a little bit. And then I'll go in and I'll bring in uh, maybe some platforms and pipes. So let's say I wanted to have a pipe sticking out of the ground right here, kind of drop that into place and maybe have that feeding right into that building right there. And then at any point, if I want to actually see what these look like at a higher resolution, I just simply right click, scene assembly, go to detail, and now I'm seeing the fully detailed version of that prop. Likewise, I can go in and grab any of these props that I've seen that I've loaded into my scene. Since they were referenced as scene assembly nodes, all of their representations will show up. I can just simply right click and now I see the fully detailed versions of those. Now, if I wanted to see this in the context, for instance, of the larger environment, I can basically just choose a particular point of view, uh, just swipe over all the representation, all the objects that I want to see higher representations of and just simply switch over into the detailed view. And that will load only what I need to see at that particular point of view. So as you can see, the new scene assembly workflow in Maya is quite powerful and uh, can be scaled uh, to work in very, very large scenes and very, very large environments in order to optimize the way that you deal with these nodes and deal with these uh, high resolution and low resolution versions of the objects. So that wraps up the demonstrations and the webcast. And again, my name is Stephen Roselle. If you uh, enjoyed the presentation and uh, want to see more, uh, learn more about Maya, definitely check out my my blog, my own Maya, on the area. But for now, that's a wrap, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.